Good afternoon. My name is Vernon Stewart. I'm the Communications Executive Director for El Paso County. Today's press conference is regarding the events that have transpired regarding Courtney and Nicole Mallory, the owners of Freedom Acres Ranch, their neighbors, and actions taken by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. There have been many media reports and a lot of social media activity surrounding this topic. Our hope today is to be as completely transparent as possible about the events that brought us here today while upholding the integrity of any ongoing investigations. El Paso County Board of County Commissioner Lojinos Gonzalez will provide some comments as this is his district. Thereafter, El Paso County Sheriff Joe Royball will give an overview and Lieutenant Gonzalez will be offering a detailed briefing on this matter today. As stated, to protect the integrity of ongoing investigations, we cannot discuss or provide details on any cases that may be ongoing at this time. Following the briefing by Lieutenant Gonzalez, we will follow with a brief Q&A. At this time, I'd like to introduce El Paso County Board of County Commissioner District 4, Lojinos Gonzalez. Commissioner. Thank you. There has been confusion within our community regarding a dispute uh, between neighbors in eastern El Paso County. The situation has created unnecessary tensions between our community and our neighbors, which is regrettable. We are committed to the safety and rights of everyone in our community. We have a responsibility to transparency and the truth. I am personally committed to transparency and truth, not just in this matter, but in all matters regarding our community. The public has the right to know all the facts about this case. That's why we're here today, to ensure the public keeps its faith and confidence in its county representation. We also ask all residents to work together to resolve conflict and find peaceful resolutions. I would like to now introduce Sheriff Joe Royball. Thanks, Commissioner. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here. I'm El Paso County Sheriff Joseph Royball. I had the distinct pleasure and responsibility of serving the citizens of El Paso County as a sheriff and leading the sheriff's office in the Colorado's, Colorado's most populous county. As you know, there has been recent attention given to a series of online articles published by the ARC Republic. With the first article published on January 16th, the article garnered interest with some media outlets and social media interests. Courtney and Nicole Mallory, who are the residents in Eastern El Paso County, were featured in these articles, which detailed the Mallory's account to the author. The article largely described what the Mallory's perceive as racially motivated attacks by their neighbors against them, their animals, and their property, as well as accusations of racial discrimination against them on the part of the Sheriff's Office employees. Misinformation and the mischaracterization of my office and my employees has led to a level of uneasiness for many residents of Yoder and some members of my staff and family members who have been specifically targeted. Misinformation is greatly mitigated with balanced reporting when an article is published. The first article by the ARC Republic was done without comment from my office the author has publicly stated she attempted to speak with the representative from my agency regarding these allegations. We have no record of such call. None of my command staff, my public information officers, nor I were ever contacted, despite the fact that our phone numbers and email addresses are easily found in our public website. Attention to the situation escalated on February 6th when Courtney Mallory was arrested during traffic stop by the Colorado State Patrol for an active warrant. A fact misrepresented by the ARC in their article dated on February 7th when they stated Mr. Mallory was taken into custody by El Paso County deputy sheriffs. Portions of the arrest were live streamed by Nicole Mallory. I'd like to clear up the topic of Mr. Mallory's bond related to this arrest. Some members of the media and other local groups tried to imply he was held improperly on a no-bond hold in my jail following this arrest. 
The warrant itself had a $2,000 bond indicated. However, at the time of booking, my intake staff realized a $2,000 bond was inconsistent with state statute. Based on this stalking charge for which he was being booked, stalking was one of three charges listed on the warrant. My staff notified the courts who confirmed the error, error and in turn sent the jail an updated copy of the warrant indicating a revised no bond in accordance with state law. Since the time of Mr. Mallory's arrest, my office has received numerous emails and calls with people voicing concern with how we have handled the Mallory situation over the last two years and voicing concerns about racism and property rights, callers being unaware of the facts of our involvement, which is largely why we are here today. A larger concern about the emails and calls are the threatening tone some have taken. People have threatened damage to our facilities and threatened violence towards my staff. In some cases, family members of staff. Let me be clear, no family member of my staff is connected to our calls for service or investigative efforts concerning Mr. and Mrs. Mallory or the specific cases which you will hear about today. The threats and accusations are examples of the damage which can be done when misinformation gets ahead of the facts. In a few moments, you will hear from Lieutenant Chris Gonzalez, who will provide a higher level of detail as to the Sheriff's Office involvement with the Mallory's, as well as the residents in the Yoder area over the past couple of years. But here are some general facts important for you to know. Between 2021 and 2022, the time frame during which the issues arose and has persisted, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office personnel have responded to over 170 calls for service involving several addresses near Yoder. Most calls associated with these addresses were regarding criminal allegations lodged between property owners in this area against each other, as well as calls regarding a property easement dispute. During the same time, our law enforcement personnel responded to over 200,000 calls for service overall in unincorporated El Paso County. Of those 170 calls for service, there were 24 case reports taken. In an effort to be transparent and let the facts speak for themselves, we will make available all case reports which are not associated with an active investigation following this press conference. There have been four custodial arrests made during this time frame. Arrests stem from complaints initiated by the Mallory's and complaints initiated by others. I recognize we are human and we can always strive to do better. To that point, approximately a week ago, I directed my staff to review all reports taken and ensure we have done everything we should have during our response to these calls. This review found two events where we as an office could have done more during our investigation. Those two cases have been reactivated to ensure we work them more completely. One of these cases lists the Mallory's as the victim. Those two reports are not included in the packets released today since they are reactivated at this time. Also during this time frame, there have been 19 specific personnel complaints sent into my office alleging employee misconduct. All of those were investigated in accordance with office policy. I want to ensure the citizens of El Paso County, we at the Sheriff's Office, take our oath seriously. We are charged with protecting the constitutional rights of all citizens. We are charged with protecting those rights and I'm confident our actions and responses to the calls and complaints in the Yoder community have been objective and based on facts and law, not on race. No one would be more eager than I to rid my office of a deputy sheriff who was racist and treating members of the community unfairly based on race. The sheriff's office conducts purposeful initial and ongoing employee education to prevent bias-based policing on the part of our members, to recognize it if it occurs and to report it and to hold such behavior accountable if witnessed. Again, we take all allegations of crime and civil rights violations seriously. In closing, as a reminder, I have reached out to the Black and Latino Leadership Coalition more than a week ago, asking for their assistance in coordinating a meeting to address ongoing concerns brought forward by Mr. and Mrs. Mallory. Thus far, no progress has been made due to some reluctance on the part of the Mallory's. 
I'm hopeful the Mallory's will give me an opportunity to address their concerns. After all, I am confident the residents in Yoder and those involved in this situation all want peace and to live their lives harmoniously. I will keep you informed of any progress made in this important effort. I now introduce to you Lieutenant Chris Gonzalez. I would first like to thank everyone for coming to this press conference to seek both the truth and a resolution to the issues facing all involved properties, sorry, parties. I would like to brief you on some pertinent information that might help portray a more accurate understanding of the situation as well as the events that have transpired through today. I will be presenting a timeline of events and a description of these events and a portion of my presentation includes body-worn camera videos of several of our personnel's prior interactions with Nicole Mallory. These videos are being used to counter specific claims and complaints publicly made against our personnel. All of these recordings will be available in their entirety after the press conference. The affected area is a rural ranch land in eastern El Paso County. It is comprised of parcels ranging anywhere from 40 acre plots to over a thousand acres. The property belonging to Nicole and Courtney Mallory is a large parcel of over a thousand acres. The other nearby parcels, including the Clark parcel, are closer to 40 acres. There is over 1.4 miles of land between the Mallory homestead and the Clark homestead. All the land between the two parcels is part of the Mallory family property. There is an easement dividing the Clark property and the Mallory property, which holds the only access to several ranch properties, including Clark's. The sole purpose of this easement is to provide property access to the adjacent landlocked properties. This is a photo of the easement in question. On April 7th, 2021, deputies responded to a menacing call for service at Nicole and Courtney Mallory's residence. The investigating deputy is Michelle Reed, who is assigned to the Rural Enforcement and Outreach Unit. Rio, as it is called, is a six deputy and one sergeant unit specifically tasked with handling calls for service in Eastern El Paso County. The unit is tasked with livestock and ranch type animal complaints, general criminal activity, illicit marijuana cultivation, and homeless outreach. This is a highly trained, skilled, and well-regarded unit that has an excellent presence in Eastern El Paso County. I'm gonna show you the initial video taken by a process server who entered Nicole and Courtney Mallory's property to serve Courtney Mallory with a civil process. The second video is the body-worn camera video from Deputy Michelle Reed and her contact with Nicole Mallory. Please be aware that the following videos, as well as all the videos, contain profane language and might be difficult for sensitive viewers. This is an attempt to serve Courtney Mallory. We are at... in Yoder, Colorado. Here's the gate, it's a lock gate. And the property is over there.
Hello? Hello? Hello, is someone in there? Freedom Ranch is. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, 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 hey! hey. What the fuck are you doing? Listen, I have some legal documents. Get the fuck off my property! Hey, get the fuck off! I'm, I'm right leaving! Now. I'm leaving! Get the fuck I'm out leaving! Of here. I'm leaving! Get the fuck out of here! I'm leaving! Get the fuck out of here! I'm leaving! Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! You I'm leaving! I'm leaving! I swear to God! Relax! I'm leaving! I'm leaving! She's unarmed. We're speaking with her. Code 4, you can clear the code. Uh, Ma'am, how you doing? So I'm Deputy Reed with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. The reason that we're out here is because we had a call. There was a weapon involved, and we're trying to investigate to figure out what's going on. Okay, so I doing this what what did you have in your hand i did have a gun in my hand what type of weapon did you it have it was a shotgun okay and i i was like what are you doing he ran i asked for id because everything is locked here so why were you on the property i didn't have no shirt and i i was outside without without a shirt on chasing him because i did not know why he was here but he ran i couldn't get his id so then when I went down there, I saw his car was sitting there, so I was trying to call the police, but I didn't have a signal. I couldn't get his tag number, but I, I don't know who he was at okay. all, but he was here. So did he did he say anything to you? I, I It happened so fast. I mean, I was in a state of shock slightly because Obviously, I have no clothes on, and someone's looking through the window, and so I'm like, what so, the hell is going on? Okay, so what window was he looking through? Um, Right there on the shed, there's a window right, right there. Right, I see that one on this side, on yes. the south side? Okay. No, not that one, this one, all the way over here behind this other building, he was looking through the shed. Window. Okay, wait, let's, let me, so I see your van, and there's a fifth wheel, and oh, then a, here. a big... Look right here, there's like a white part on the top, you see? Yeah. And it's there, there's a little area in there. Oh, I, another shed. Okay, yes. I see what you're talking about. And so he was looking through the window. So obviously, I mean, look at the gate. I don't, it says no trespassing. I mean, I'm trying to protect myself, my animals, my property. I, I, I did not know. He didn't provide ID. He just started running. 
And then, and then what happened when he started running? He just was running. The dog was chasing after him, and he was running. That was it. And then he got to his car, but I didn't have a shirt on, so I'm walking with the dog. And that, that's um, nothing. But his, his car was sitting down here, okay. and I don't know if the call went through when I called 911. Gotcha. But it was like a blue. So at what? SUV. So at what point did the you discharge the weapon? It did not. That's why I'm kind of confused. Um, I had it and I was pointing it like, hey, give me some ID because uh -huh. I don't know who you are. But that was kind of, and I asked for ID. He didn't provide it. He just started running. My dog was there, mm -hmm. but he didn't bite him or anything. Okay, I mean, ma'am, what's your what's your first name? Nicole. N-I-C-O-L-E. C-O-L-E, your middle yes. name? Uh, Mallory. M A L L E R Y E R Y yes. last name No last name Mallory middle name is Lachey L A S H A Y L A S H A Y and yes. what's your date of birth uh, And your ID is out of what state Um Texas And it, this is your property here Yes and who else is on the property? Um, no one is here now. It's just me and my animals. So you and the dog, and what do you have? Horses or what? Uh, I have cows, chickens, oh, okay. turkeys. I'm yeah. oh, not turkeys. Chickens, uh, laying hens that are outside. My goats, okay. sheep, my pigs. Gotcha. And then I have um, two other dogs. And then my. Um, you said two other dogs. dogs? Yes. Okay. Um, and then my puppies, uh, Great Pyrenees. Okay. Puppy. What's a good phone number for you? Do you so, did the person that called was that the person who trespassed? So yeah, so at this point he's saying that he was a process server or something to that effect and he had legal documents to for serve. Who? I don't know. He didn't okay. tell me who served, but, but he breached the peace. So I do want to file a complaint now that you're here. He trespassed, and I feel like he was trying to rape me at this point. He didn't provide ID if he was a process. So server. how? Let me ask you this: um, How close in proximity were you to him? So just like if you just estimate in yards or feet or something, like were you guys like was it the space between this fence here or larger? So, I saw his face, he's a shed. Obviously, I'm startled. I think I'm seeing a ghost. So I didn't have any clothes on. Gotcha. So I put my pants on. And then I came outside. He was just walking around. And so he was like over there. But I guess when he saw me, he started coming toward me. And I said, you need to show me some ID right now. Like, what the fuck are you doing on my property? Like, okay. what the fuck are you? That's what I said. Right. And he was like, I, I, I just got some papers, I think he said, or something. And I was like, I don't know who the fuck you are. You trespass on my property. Give me some ID right now. Okay. And he just took off running. So I would say probably about like right there, the dog was coming and he just started running. He never provided ID. There was no ID. But I just want to file and breaking his instrument. I have private property. All of this is locked. And when he came out, Okay. Well, well, exactly. But, I, okay, the, what we need to figure out, we already know that he didn't have any ill intent, like there was no assault necessarily planned. He said he came to serve legal documents. Now, we can't move past the fact that he did go to your gate, okay? I'm not, we're not denying any of that. Well, what I'm trying to figure out is at what point did the weapon get discharged because he's saying that there was a discharge of the weapon in the air. That did not happen. Okay. But, and you have the weapon here? Uh, yes. It is okay. Here. So, uh, my supervisor is en route to our location. Uh, so, um... We can try to figure figure all that out once he gets here, if you're willing to cooperate with us. I mean, I want to file a complaint. It feels like I'm Absolute. being Absolutely. Well, that's, in listen, here man, we're, we're here right now, and we drove here as fast as we could because, you know, we get a, uh, some So just out of curiosity, when he called, did he say I broke into someone's property? I'm just trying to understand how that conversation went, like what he called for. Uh, no, he, that was not the conversation. It, it transpired like I explained it to you, that he came to serve paperwork 
and all the way up there. I'm Pam. I'm here's the okay. thing. I'm <laughs> Okay. I'm you saying, you have listen, here's the thing. And right. I don't play when it comes to my, my safety and my security. I had no clothes on. He was looking through the lift window. Right. So to me that's an attempted assault, attempted rape. You're looking through my window, you're keeping calm or whatever. Okay. You had no ID, so at this point. He never provided me any ID to verify whoever he was. He just walked around my property like he lived here. No, and, and listen, I get it, and I'm I'm just trying to gather the facts, okay? Because obviously I wasn't here when everything right. transpired, so I want to get. On April 21st, 2021, during the investigation of that menacing by Deputy Reed, a search warrant and arrest warrant were obtained for Nicole Mallory and her property. A risk assessment was made regarding the execution of the search warrant, and it was determined the property was to be secured by the SWAT team prior to the execution of the search warrant. This risk assessment includes a review of the property, the criminal activity on the property, the nature of the involved offense, the involvement of weapons, and a complete criminal history review of the suspect. In this case, it was Nicole Mallory. Nicole Mallory was arrested for the menacing of the process server. She was also arrested while SWAT was on scene for an assault on a peace officer stemming from her actions during contact with deputies on scene at the execution of the search warrant. The shotgun used in the menacing case was recovered by investigators. Ms. Mallory is on probation for the menacing incident with the process server and is on a deferred sentence for the assault of our deputy. The following video is of Nicole Mallory being detained with two other individuals during said execution of the search warrant. I will note that Nicole Mallory is under arrest at this point for the warrant issued by the 4th Judicial District. Okay, but I need to see the search warrant. Okay, you'll okay. get a copy. You'll get a copy. Go ahead and step on up. Now. Not right now. You're in custody. I, but you, step I can't even move my arm here. Ma'am, just use your feet. I, my arm is too tight. It needs okay. to be You don't need your arm to take a step. Okay, but it's cutting off my circulation. Ma'am, step up there, please. Right. It's cutting off. This is needs right, to be loosened. Okay, well, I'll check on it. Can you please have a seat? No, I, I need this unloosened uh, because it is cutting off. Right now? It's cutting off my circulation. I can't even move my arm here. Okay. This one, the other the one. All right, go ahead and turn around. This hey. Kamrowski, you got a key? No, not me. Mm -hmm. Hey, what am I? What's this about? You got a key? Barman. What's this about? You got anything on it? Huh? No. What's this about? I need to see the search warrant it's now. Like I said, well, no, I want to see it now. I want to see it now. Jen, I need to call my lawyer now because I want to see a search warrant now. We have a search warrant and a search warrant. Let me see it. No, ma'am, not right now. I can't believe this shit, You got a key? Go ask one of these guys the key. Go ahead and have a seat, sir. Do I have to? Oh, yes, sir. Sir. Let me do a quick pat down of you, okay? What's this about? Well, I don't know. Do you have anything on anything I'm supposed to have? No. Any firearms, anything like that? No. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking this shit. Just a pocket knife right here? Yeah, just a box cutter. You know, to open feed bags up with, cut, cut hay bales open with. Just normal stuff a farmer has on him. I got you. Mm 
My livestock's in the shed. That's a lock. I hope y'all ain't bust my front gate down, man, because I just, that's bullshit. Like, what, what, like what, like what right do y'all think y'all had to come and tear people shit up like that? Y'all had a drone, y'all flew a drone. I heard something flying in the air, like y'all saw everything y'all need to see, so why y'all tear my shit up? What was the whole point of that? So we have a search warrant. I saw y'all talk. I, ta I saw y'all tear people shit up, and now I ain't find nothing. I ain't like what the fuck? Well, we we know what we're looking for right now. What are you looking for? Well, you'll, well, I'll let you know later. You'll see that in the search warrant. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing stolen here. Thank you. All right. So y'all don't shoot or kill nothing around here. You know what I'm saying? Because everything is where the fuck it's supposed to be. Like I'm not understanding that. Like y'all told my gator. Like, I, I don't have any circulation on this. Two fingers. I got a body count. I don't That's have go any circulation yeah, here. Call. Like, where's the sergeant? Where's the duty. person that's in charge? You know what I'm saying? Who's now, in charge? because I can't even feel my arm over here. I can't feel nothing. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is fucking cruel. I told you from the beginning this shit was too tight. I fucking can't feel my shoulder. You better give me some fucking medical attention now. I swear to fucking God on everything I fucking love. Give me some fucking, give me some fucking medical attention. Give me some fucking medical attention. No, I fucking hurt. I fucking hurt. I can't fucking feel it.
One of the complaints made by Nicole Mallory is that she was injured while being detained and denied any medical care. As you can clearly see, her restraints were checked for proper fit, tightness, and double locked at least once during her detention. In addition, Nicole Mallory was afforded the opportunity to be seen by paramedics from the Colorado Springs Fire Department Tactical Emergency Medical Unit while still at the property. She was also taken to the hospital for a medical clearance prior to being booked into jail. The following video is of Nicole Mallory being transferred to an ambulance so she can be transported to the hospital for that medical clearance. Pull her out so she can walk back here. Right, you guys can park here. We'll walk her. In the ambulance, if you can step down. If you can step down. Can you step down? Okay, ma'am. We need you to step down. So why did you put me in here? Oh, God, the fucking arm is broken. You refused medical and you stepped up into the vehicle on your own. We're asking you now to step down. If you can go ahead and step down. We're going to get you checked out by medical. Can you slot this other leg around? If you can go ahead and step down, there's a step. All right. We're right here in case you need to step down. We'll help brace your steps. We'll help you brace your steps to get to the cot. Oh, oh, that fucking pig! Ah, you fucking broke my arm! The fucking pig! Ah, I know you guys did a lot of work with those cuffs. Well, yeah, Absolutely. it's just going to be so much better. Absolutely, Becky. I just don't have a. I got it. I know, ma'am. I'm going to get you warm, okay? So I know. We're going to have you and Becky follow her. Wherever they're going? Yeah, and then after that, book her. Gotcha. Um, I'll take a copy of your warrant. You got an alphabet search. Oh, okay. It's, the paperwork is right on my desk. We're going to turn you, okay, and get you comfortable. I appreciate it. She's still cuffed on the left arm. She's saying that it's this arm. I know. I'm just saying she still has cuff on the left arm. Oh, gotcha. I got this. Can we turn you? Yeah, I know. During her arrest, Nicole Mallory was confrontational, profane, and non-compliant. She assaulted a deputy and used racially derogatory statements against the arresting deputy, Michelle Reed, who is an African-American female and assigned to the Rural Enforcement and Outreach Unit. She made numerous accusations of bias and was confrontational with caregivers at the hospital. We cannot show you several expert excerpts from Nicole Mallory at the hospital in order to protect her HIPAA privacy rights. After she refused medical care, she was transported to the jail where she was booked in. I will now show you the recording of Deputy Reed interacting with Nicole Mallory during the booking process at the jail. Female deputy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, absolutely. Sorry. There you go, my dear. There you go. If you're not able to cut, take it off, they'll be cut it off. And I would Why like, do you have to be so hyper aggressive with me, black lady? I don't understand it. Okay, let me just see your hand. Jesus Christ. You did enough to me. Ah, still Negro at its finest. Wow, that came off quite easily. Oh, you mm -hmm. always have something to say, Miss Steel Negro. Go over there and worship your master. There's something else in the back about us. It's nothing in my hair at yeah, all. Really don't to touch me. Please don't no. let her touch okay. me. I'm She's sorry. already okay. punched me. Okay. Do not touch me. Hey. Hey, I'm just touch gonna look. Okay. okay, that's fine. But this still Negro, don't touch me. On April 27th, 2021 disputes over the easements begin with Nicole Mallory calling in a complaint that a neighbor is grazing animals on her land. The neighbor was Teresa Clark. The complaint was Teresa Clark was grazing animals in the easement. This begins the repeated disputes over property lines, access, and boundaries. On May 11th, 2021, Nicole and Courtney Mallory called in to report an unidentified male trespassing on their property. Deputies were able to locate the male who was suffering from a medical episode to include exhaustion, disorientation, and trouble maintaining his balance. There were significant concerns for his welfare and he was transported to the hospital via AMR. On May 24th, or I'm correction, May 14th, 2021, Courtney, Courtney Mallory called EPSO dispatch because he was concerned for his safety after the murder of his ranch hand. He requested EPSO patrol check the area to ensure his safety. There was an active investigation into the murder of Don, Don Asanio Amaya, and there is a person of interest in this case. Nicole and Mallory, um, Nicole and Courtney Mallory were interviewed in this investigation because the victim did work for them. Several social media sites contain accusations that EPSO Sergeant Ray Gerhardt of murdering Donaciano 
at the Mallory property. At no time during their interview did Nicole or Courtney Mallory express their concern that Sergeant Gerhardt murdered the ranch hand. Sergeant Gerhardt is in no way a suspect in this investigation. The accusation of his involvement did not arise until after he authored the arrest warrants for Nicole and Courtney Mallory. On August 11th, 2021, Nicole Mallory confronted a father and son on South Lape Road regarding their alleged trespassing on the Mallory property. The victim was recording at the time of the interaction, and it was determined that the victim was in the public access portion of the roadway. Nicole Mallory allegedly brandished a rifle during the heated exchange. Nicole Mallory was served and released for harassment and child abuse at the office of the sheriff. This case is currently in adjudication. Between August 2021 and September 2022, EPSO Dispatch received numerous calls from the Mallory family, Teresa Clark, and many other residents in the area. Deputies responded both in person and by phone to these calls for service. Numerous cases were taken to include restraining order violations, criminal mischief, and trespass. Teresa Clark was the reporting, on, the reporting party on approximately 46 calls for service. Nicole Mallory was the reporting party on approximately 47 calls for service. Courtney Mallory was the reporting party on approximately 11 calls for service. An additional nine calls were made by other residents or involved parties in the area. There are also an additional 13 field interview records associated with the involved parties. In late August to early September of 2022, the Miami Yoder School District had to relocate a bus stop at the corner of Truckton Road and South Lape Road to one quarter of a mile east on Truckton Road. This was because Nicole Mallory would routinely sit in her vehicle at the bus stop, preventing a neighbor with whom Nicole Mallory had a protection order against from picking up their children at the stop. Nicole Mallory does not have any children attending Miami Yoder. On September 1st, 2022, deputies took a case for restraining order violation with Nicole Mallory as the victim. Nicole Mallory alleged that Teresa Clark violated a protection order by entering the disputed easement and photographing the surveillance cameras um, on the Mallory property that were pointed at the Clark household. Teresa Clark was arrested on a warrant issued by EPSO deputies. This case is also in adjudication. On September 13th, 2022, a deputy called Courtney Mallory by phone regarding an alleged restraining order violation where Mr. Mallory was the reporting party. Mr. Mallory also complained that his dog was poisoned. The deputy asked for additional information as well as requested Courtney Mallory take the dog to the veterinarian. Unsatisfied with the conversation, Nicole Mallory contacted a supervisor. During that conversation, the sergeant and Nicole Mallory concluded that Nicole Mallory, Mallory will call back at a later date that evening with addi additional information. And with that information, a case would be generated for the poisoning of the dog. We have no record of Nicole Mallory calling back with the requested information. On September 20th, 2022, Sergeant Gerhardt began an investigation into stalking allegations against Nicole and Courtney Mallory after repeated complaints from Teresa Clark. The investigation revealed that Nicole and Courtney Mallory had active surveillance on the Teresa Clark residence. They would routinely arrive in the area within moments to minutes of Teresa Clark going outside of her house. And Nicole and Mallory would taunt Teresa Clark from the property line. Teresa Clark maintained a detailed stalking log, a document provided to her by the website stalkingawareness.org. She also recorded many of these interactions. On November 22nd, 2022, Sergeant Gerhardt's investigation was reviewed by me and the district attorney. An arrest warrant was presented for review and approval to Judge Ankeny with the 4th Judicial District. An arrest warrant was issued for Nicole Mallory, as well as a search warrant for the seizure of three surveillance cameras and associated equipment located at the Mallory property. 
These cameras and motion detectors were more than 1.3 miles from the Mallory homestead, but less than 100 yards from the Clark home. Additional review led by the district attorney's office led the district attorney's office to conclude Courtney Mallory was also implicated in this case. On December 14th, 2022, an arrest warrant was issued for Courtney Mallory. Nicole Mallory turned herself in to the Elbert County Sheriff's Office on December 19th, 2022. Courtney Mallory was arrested by Colorado State Patrol on February 26th, 2022, during a traffic stop, and he was booked into the El Paso County Jail. After the arrest of Courtney Mallory, there continues to be numerous additional calls for service, as well as active invest investigations to include animal cruelty, intimidation of a victim, harassment, and menacing, all in this area. The cases are all active investigations, and I will not be able to comment on them further. I will now open it up to the media for a few questions for Sheriff Royball and me. Yes, Uh, that is something that I'm considering right now after that initial review. Uh, as you can imagine, those number of reports take quite some time. Uh, but that is something that uh, I'm, not a, I'm not afraid of having. Prior to that incident with the process server, there's almost no activity in this area. Uh, it is relatively concurrent with the Mallory's moving to the property. The uh, process server is a private citizen and as allowed by law, uh, he was contracted by the person to go out and serve Courtney Mallory. Uh, brandishing a weapon is not necessarily against the law unless you use it in a threatening manner, uh, such as to fire rounds off as the person's trying to flee the property. I don't believe Sergeant Gerhardt will be available. Any uh, accusations of misconduct uh, have been investigated. I am hoping and I'm making myself available to the Mallory's uh, through the Black and Latino Leadership Coalition. And I'm hoping they reach out to me and to address any concerns, allow me that opportunity to address any concerns they have with that neutral party. The information I have available is that there was a civil process from a court order and that whoever that person was hired him to go serve Courtney Mallory with that civil process. I'm glad you asked that. That easement is a 60 foot wide 
piece of land that is technically on the Mallory property. However, it is set aside by the, the county for access to all the landlocked properties back there. There are access gates for several property owners to include the Mallory's and the Clark's. is on their own property and being on the easement, which is public property, why, why would that constitute stalking? So when you, if you look at statute, um, you are not allowed to record other individuals on a lengthy basis. And due to the constant surveillance on the Clark property, as well as the use of that surveillance to uh, time their arrival with Ms. Clark, as well as showing up and taunting her, the district attorney, as well as a judge agreed that that constitutes a violation. If you go and actually look at Colorado revised statutes, it's very self-explanatory. Thank you all for joining us today. The case reports will be released by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office via their website at www.epcsheriffsoffice.com. For additional information related to these cases, please reach out to their lead PIO, Lieutenant Deborah Minot at 719-520-7141. You should have her contact information in your press packets. Thank you all for coming today.